Okay, so quantization. One of the important steps in doing conversion from analog to digital uh, signals, recall we go through sampling and then quantization. I guess we are done with sampling and now it's time to talk about quantization. So in the process of the analog to digital conversion, we are focusing on quantization. We have discussed low pass filtering and anti-aliasing filter. We looked at sampling and now we looked at quantization. All right, so we would like to go over the following introduction, quantization noise power, generation of PCM signals, combining non combining or the so-called non-uniform quantization. We'll look at the mu law, the A law, and the impact on the signal to noise ratio. So basically, we want to know what's quantization and would like to see what is uniform and non-uniform quantization. Now, the following diagram is just to illustrate that quantization operates on the y-axis. It's quantizing the levels of the signals. So to define quantization, an analog sample with amplitude that may take values in a specific range is converted to a digital sample with amplitude that's pre-specified, predefined to a certain quantized values. Let's say that this is our signal. The signal is shown here for illustration. This shows the, the samples, the sampling time. So we have TS, at 2TS we have another sample, 3TS, 4TS and so on. On the y-axis we have the quantization levels. You can see here that in this quantizer we assume that the p possible values to be quantized is minus mp and the maximum is mp. There are a couple of variables we need to understand. So the solid circles here are the quantized input samples x. Okay? Now, we are dividing the y-axis into four levels here. This is one level, another level, third, fourth, and the total we have eight levels. So the number of levels here in this example, eight levels, L equal to eight. L is the number of levels. We are quantizing every sample to its center point. For example, anything that's in between here will be with the corresponding quantized value will be the center value. We're showing these center values with dotted lines. For example, this sample is between this range. So we're quantizing the solid circle into the hollow circle, the mid value. This one is being quantized. Uh, so this one is going to be quantized to this value. Similarly, here we're going down to the center value. Here it's going up, going down, going down, and so on. So how many bits do we need to represent this example quantizer? Since we have eight levels, then the number of bits n equals to two raised to the power n, two raised to the power n should be L. So eight equal to two raised to the power n, which means n in this example should equal to three, the number of bits in this quantizer. So we have defined MP, L is the number of levels, and then also, uh, the spacing between the quantization levels is known as delta nu or delta v if you want to make it simple. This is the Greek letter, delta nu, or we just going to say to make things simple, delta v. Okay? So the following, the first relation we need to define is what is the spacing between these levels? What is delta nu equal to? We need to talk the, the total range, which is 2 mb, divided by the number of possible levels which is 8 in our example. We have 8 different levels. So tell me what's MP? Multiply by 2 because we have positive and negative and then divide by the number of levels L. Okay, now in the following diagram, we are showing the relation, the input-output characteristics of the quantizer. So in this axis, we have the input. This axis, we have Y. Uh, we have the output quantized. So we have two signals, the input to the quantizer, we may call it X, all right? And the output for the quantizer is called X sub Q. 
So if you allow me just to, to state this down, we have x going to a quantizer. The output would be x sub q. So how do we define the error? How we quantify how we, how do we quantify the error? The error is quantified here to be the difference between x the true original signal minus xq. If the relation between them was a straight line, it means every value at the input would be mapped to the output as is. In that case, we have infinite bit quantizer or perfect quantization. There is no error introduced. However, in real life quantizers, we have certain number of outputs. So, uh, like if you if you look at the example here, represent our previous uh, quantizer. It says anything that's beyond beyond NP will be just saturated. Will be will use the highest level. Anything below the minimum will be just saturated. Will use um, the minimum possible values in the quantizer. Anything between zero and delta v will be mapped to the middle value delta v over two. Between delta v and two delta v will be mapped to three delta v over two, and so on. So we are mapping to the middle value. So using this diagram, we can show what is the output given the input. So if somebody says the output is three volt, for example. I will just look at 3 volt, whatever that is, 3 volt, and then find what the output is. Uh, 3.7, okay, whatever value. This help us to find out what's the quantized value. You know that 3.7 or even 3.8 will be back to the same value because of the quantization. So this diagram is called the input-output characteristics of the quantizer. If you want to sketch or show the error, the difference, if you subtract these two signals and sketch, you'll find out that this diagram shows uh, the relation this figure shows the relation between the input and the output and of course whenever we pass by the zero it means that there is no error which means we are at the exact quantization level of course once you exceed the maximum the error will, will grow up dramatically this range is 2 mp and beyond that the error is expected to grow up so make sure to understand how these sketches drawn and what they mean you can pause and think about them for a while Now, let's now try to study the quantization noise power. Little bit of math to understand how things are working. We'll assume that our signal is now restricted between minus n, p, and b, so there is no, ex does not exceed, we don't go to the large error re region, we do not exceed the maximum. And then we are going to define our quantization error, q, to be, uh, to be assumed to be random and uniformly redistributed, which means between two different levels, okay, between this level, uh, between one level and another, let's say between this level and this level, it can take any value in between in a uniform way. So it's not concentrated in a certain region, it's uniform between any uh, value and the other. Okay, so we're saying that it's uniform between minus delta v over 2 and plus delta v over 2. So if this is the center value, okay, we are, this is delta v over 2, and this is delta v over 2. Now this shows you that the maximum possible error is not delta v, the maximum possible error is delta v over 2, because we can go above or below. So how do we sketch this, how we write this mathematically? If, if you have some little bit of background on uh, statistics, or um, probability, you'll find out that we can sketch this PDF as a uniform, which means it's constant value between minus delta v over 2 to plus delta v over 2. And we want the area to be 1. So the width here is the uh, v. The height should be, or delta v rather, the height should be 1 over delta v to keep the probability, total probability equal to 1, to keep the area equal to 1. Uh, if you don't have a background on probability, then you might just forget about this part. You can assume that what we're saying is true. The height must be 1 over delta v, so that the width, it's a uniform constant. The width is delta v, so the height must be 1 over delta v, so the multiplication, the area must equal to 1. Okay, so this is called uniform, and it's fair assumption because we don't know much about our signal. If you want to find the power of a probabilistic signal, what you do, you square the signal and you multiply by its probability PDF. 
So this is Q squared because we are not looking for the amount of error, but rather we are looking for the for the power of the error. So power is related to the square of the magnitude. And we're multiplying by, we're scaling by the probability. Again, if you don't have the, the right background on statistics or probability, you can assume that this is given. We just use the final result. Oh, okay, so and these values, these probabilities are only between these two limits in the integration. Okay, and now conducting the integration as a function of q, we get uh, q cube over 3. That's just a constant will be outside. These are the integration limits. By substitution, squaring and opening the bracket, we will find out 2 raised to the power 3 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24. And collecting the proper terms, we'll find out the amount of noise or quantization noise error is delta v squared over 12. You need to recall this number and recall the assumption that this is only true assuming uniform distribution. It makes some sense because the larger the value of the spacing between the levels, the higher the error. Not only that, it's proportional to the square of that distance. So please remember this equation. Now, to continue forming the quantization noise power uh, in different ways, so recall that delta V is 2 MP over L. This is the first equation I want you to recall. Again, it's logical. And the spacing between the, the levels equal to the total range of the quantizer divided by the number of levels. Here, the, this is the equation we have, the, we have just derived. So we can take this inside and we get the following equation. So you can substitute here the red part of the signal squared, then we have 2 squared, get 4, 4 with 12 cancel, we get 3. So this is another important form for the equation I would like you to remember. Okay, now the signal to noise ratio is the ratio, this is the noise power, but sometimes we want to write it in a way that signal to noise. So we can say the signal to noise ratio, remember that we're calling the quantization error as noise, huh? so the terminology is we call it quantization noise or just noise. If you want to write the signal to noise ratio of the power of the input signal at the output of the quantizer, okay, to the output of the quantizer, you can get the following expression. So the signal to noise ratio is a signal power over the noise power. We can write it in different uh, formats, for example, S out over N out, S out over NQ, because in our case, the only output noise come from the quantizer. You can say it's the average value, it's the mean squared value. Again, it's nothing but the power, or divide by Q squared, which is the quantization noise power, or PS over PQ. I'm just, I just want you to get used to whatever terminology is being used. Now, PS remains the same. Now, this expression now in the denominator will be flipped up. So we have 3L squared, MP squared times PS, where PS is the signal uh, power. Once more, this is the noise power, okay, this is the noise power, and this is the signal to noise ratio, okay? Now, the title says signal to noise ratio in the dB scale. So what, what is new in this slide is basically trying to restate the signal to noise ratio, but rather using the dB scale. Now, in general, values of the signal to noise ratio are either very large or much less than one. And if you use uniform or linear scale, the normal scale we have daily, it's not proper because it divides all the regions equally. The beauty about the log scale or the dB scale, it's going to expand the small values and compress the large values, and uh, that's more uh, appropriate for, uh, for our scenario. So in, in case you are not familiar with the dB scale, I advise you to look at some readings and read about dB scale or look at some videos to understand the meaning or when it's appropriate to use the dB scale and when we use the linear scale. Uh, if you recall, uh, for the case of the quantizer, the number of quantization levels is um, usually or always in the design be the number of power of 2, because we are using bits at the end. So usually L equal to 2 raised to power n. The dB, the scale, the signal to noise ratio in the linear scale, I added this subscript just to distinguish. We, had, we have derived this equation, 3L squared over MP squared times PS, signal-to-noise ratio. 
If you want to take the dB for a power value, you take 10 log 10, not 20. Uh, for the power case, we take 10 log 10. For amplitude, voltage, and current, you can have 20 log. Here in the case of power, we take 10 log of base 10 of this value to take the dB scale. So we have signal to noise ratio in dB, signal to noise ratio in, uh, sorry, in linear, signal to noise ratio in dB. It's 10 log base 10 of the original value of the linear value. Now we know the beauty about multiplication in the log scale can be separated. Okay, the red color here L squared is nothing but 2 raised to power 2n using this formula. And now um, we have separated the multiplication into two log expressions. For a reason you're going to see why in a second. And now, uh, of course, uh, simplifying this, we can call this alpha. And if you take the power in front, this is going to be 20n log 2 to base uh, 10. And if you substitute in your calculator, this is a constant number multiplied by 20, you get almost 6. This expression, you can call it alpha. It has, it's not function of n. It does not depend on the number of quantization level. It depends on the original signal okay, and the range of the quantizer. But this term is function of n. And it's approximately 6n, which means adding one more bit results in 6 dB improvement. What's 6 dB? It means 4 times. 3 dB in power means doubling. And 6 dB means 4 times. So using 4-bit quantizer rather than 3-bit quantizer, improve the signal-to-noise ratio 4 times, or 6 dB. Okay, we can say it in dB or we can say it in linear scale. So the signal to noise ratio is a constant plus six times n. Increasing n has a dramatic impact on the signal to noise ratio. But of course, the cost is we have longer PCM, we have longer bits, more number of bits to represent every sample. Okay, now what's the effect of the number of bits? This is a summary of what we said. The signal to noise ratio of the quantizer in dB increases linearly by 6 dB as we increase the number of bits of the quantizer by one bit. For every one bit, there is 6 dB. And this is coming from the equation that we have just derived. The cost of increasing the signal to noise ratio is the more bits are generated. Of course, so that using three bits per sample, we have four bits, of course, and therefore we, have, we need a higher data rate or higher bandwidth. And if you are using the same bandwidth or rate, you need longer time. When you have to pay the cost one way or another, either in the rate, bandwidth, or the delay. So the PCM will require more bits, and hence the cost will increase. Here is one exercise for you, guys. Please write your answers down in the note of the video. In a certain digital voice communication system, the error in, a sam in sample amplitudes cannot be greater than 3% of the peak amplitude. Your job is to state this 3% of the peak amplitude. Okay, that's 3. The peak amplitude is MP. 3% is 3 over 100, right? In the certain voice, digital voice communication, the error in sample amplitude, the error is delta V over 2. Cannot be greater than, okay? It should not be greater than, must be less than or equal to this value. So, What's required? Determine the number of bits. So we have MP and delta V. Remember delta V is equal to 2 MP divided by L. You need to substitute here and then you know that L is equal to 2 bar N. Finally, you can get MP with cancel. You get one equation with only N. I'm showing you this quickly. I'm wanting you to stop, pause the video and try to find the answer yourself. Okay, if you check the answer, the answer should be 6. Okay. Of course, number of bits has to be digitized. Has to be. Uh, if you get a number that's above 5, then you go to the next level, which is um, 6. Okay. So please verify this and write the exact value that you got in the notes before quantizing to the 6. Uh, one common mistake here would be to assume that uh, the error in sample. Some of you that might say that the error is delta V. The error is not delta V. The error is delta V over 2.
Okay, now let's talk about the generation of the PCM. I want to show you what happened after we quantize. Each of the levels of the quantizer is assigned a uh, number of bits. In our example, we just used uh, uh, eight bits, but for example, we can have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, up to 1, 1, 1, depending on the number of quantization level. One way to do it is one bit at a time. We can generate what we call a digit at a time. So the first digit will be generated. Are we up or down? So are we in the lower half or higher half? If we are here, we get zero. If we are here, we get one. The first bit is generated. Now, we can divide this into two parts. Are we in, in, are we in upper part or lower part? The second bit will be zero or one. And so on to generate the bit. So it, a digit at a time encoder makes in sequential comparison to generate in bits code word. The sample is compared with um, the different levels. In the beginning, we compare with the middle. If we are here, we get one. If we are here, we get zero. Now, if we are here, we, we compare again. Are we in this level or this level? And then are we here or here? And so on. So it's called one digit at a time. So basically, we start with sampling, quantization, and then every sample will be generated. So this sample is 0, 0, 0, 1, for example, I generate these bits. And then this sample, and then this sample, I take the corresponding code, and we get the PCM signal. Okay, now, example of PCM signals, a color scanner is scanning a picture of 11 inch and width of 8.5 inches, letter size paper. The resolution of the scanner is 600 dots per inch, that's TPI. That's dividing one inch, okay, inch is two point something, um, two point three or so uh, centimeters. We're dividing this into 600 dots. This is why they use in the printers, the TPI, dot per inch. So, in our case, in each dimension, and the picture will be quantized using 256 level per each color. Find the time it would require to transmit this picture using a modem of speed of the following speed. Okay, if you know the speed, we need to know how much, how many bits, because this is bits per second. I need to know how many bits, and then I will tell you how many seconds are there. So let's start with the picture. A colored scanner is scanning a picture of this dimension. So the picture has dimension 11 by 8.5. Huh? This is the letter American size uh, paper, 8.5 uh, times 11. So how do you find the area? You multiply these numbers, you get the inch squared. Okay, now the resolution of the scanner is 600 per dot in each dimension. So 11 times 8.5, then you multiply by 600 times 600 because we have, we are dividing, we are sampling in X and Y. Now recall that we'll get finally, we'll get pixels. Huh? Okay, so in fact, we need to multiply by three because we're using colored scanner. So we have Every page is in fact three pages, RGB, red, green, blue. Now we need to know how many pixels are there. We found the number of pixels. This is going to be 11 times 8.5 times uh, three, three for the number of colors. Now how many bits per pixel? In every pixel, how many bits do we use, whether it's red, green, or blue? It says we have 256. This is L for the quantizer, 256 which is equal to 2 raised to power, how much raised to power? 8. So we need 8 bits per pixel. Okay, that will give you the total number. Okay, I'll leave this for you to read. Okay, it just, uh, you can pause this and read. Now it says 11 times 8.5, 11 times 8.5 times 600 dot per inch per high times 600 dot per inch per width. So this would cancel out times 3 colors and then times 8 bits per color. You get this huge number of of bits. How do you find the speed? Okay, we have bits here, we have bits per second. If you divide this, you get, this is the total number, this is the speed divide, you get the number of seconds, 14,426. This is of course huge time, this is like four hours. Do you want to scan and send your page in one hour? The answer is no, so we need to find ways to compress our data or find techniques to make the transmission faster. So for this reason, compression is used. Compression is beyond the scope. And at KFUBM, we have a course that's 430 in E430, Information Theory and Coding. If you want to know more about that, you can, you can uh, 
opt to use uh, to register for that course.